Okay, big day, race day. I mean, we missed a big race, but we're here for the crappy small race with no wind. I've got Josh Mayo with me. Yeah. Double-handed tonight. First race we've done in about a year, so it should be interesting. Mainly to see if the rig holds up. Still got no vang, snapped off, but we do have a possibly working um, mast winch to raise the main, so that's a good thing. Yeah. See how we go. Ooh, listen to that lovely, sweet, silky, smooth single cylinder. Or something like that. So, we're departing from St. Peterport. This is the Fisherman's Key in front of us. Some of the fishing fleet of Guernsey. Uh, there's one of our class one competitors we so setting off. And you can see from the water, there's literally two to three knots wind. Uh, very, very quiet. We're on our way out, and uh, one of the big condor ferries is also leaving at the same time. So now we've basically just got to bob around for a second, yeah, waiting for it to pass. On freight to port. On freight to port. Tears to port. Graffade to port. You see, you know what's on it. So we've just received the course instructions over WhatsApp of all things. Um, and as you can see from the map, it's basically a giant sausage. Nice, easy course and pretty much perfect for our first race back. You can see the other boats that are going out to race uh, have put their sails up already. Uh, both of us being double-handed and not even sure whether or not the main sail goes up and down at this point. Uh, we left that till we got out of the harbour. So, when I said we'd missed a big race, I was on about the inter-island annual race, so Guernsey to Jersey or vice versa. That was the one I was aiming to get the boat back in the water for, but yep, sailed straight past that. So this is a standard round the cans type race. It is part of a series, but it is actually the last race in the series, so uh, we're just happy to be here. just about see on the right of Josh now some red traffic lights right on the end of that pier head and those basically mean there's a big commercial boat leaving or coming in you can see another condor ferry with its uh, engines running just there as well so you can get a little bit hectic for sure it does affect the racing sometimes as well because basically if we're headed north off the start line um, it takes us straight past this harbour opening so that can get quite interesting go up, will it jam? The anticipation. When I put it by hand, I put it on the wind, I can it up. Otherwise, So in Josh's defense, uh, and if you'd seen the shakedown run video, the uh, thing holding the van to the boom had actually already fallen off the boat, so the part that was on wasn't actually meant to take those kind of loads. Yeah? Good? Yeah, that's good. Okay, Sam. See, I think we do this, mate. But that's D up there anyway. I think this is you. Sorry, I'm trying to work out which is D and which is U. I really want to know which is the starting line. <clears throat> okay, let's try going upwind. Yeah, calling stuff on the radio. Yeah, 
We said 37. So in this particular race series, uh, there's two classes of boats racing. There's the class one race boats and the class two cruise boats, which we're a part of. Um, the class ones set off uh, five minutes before class two, so the class ones are just starting on the left hand side of the screen there. Um, so that means we've got five minutes to go to our start. So what we're doing at the moment is doing practice runs on the start line so that we can try and work out our timing for when we come to our actual start. So what we're discussing at the moment is whether or not, uh, with the wind coming from the north, which is the right hand side of the picture, whether or not we could actually just make the, the outside pin of the start line on this tack. That's the outside pin you can see there, that yellow boy um, just coming under Josh's arm now. And the, the inside marker of the start line is a, uh, a, a flag effectively on Castle Corner, so it's quite a long start line. Okay, so now we're coming up to 30 seconds for our start. Let's see how we do. Let fully out. So we were a little bit late to the start line and we were a little bit further away from that boy than I wanted to be, um, but it wasn't a bad start. There's three boats in the race, uh, the boat that you saw on screen a few seconds ago and another boat uh, behind us into our uh, starboard called Glory Days, who I don't think we've ever beaten before. Um, you've just heard me ask Josh to get to the low side of the boat, you'll notice we're both on the uh, lured or low side of the boat and that's because it's very light winds and we're trying to encourage the boat to heel over a bit to get it going a little bit quicker. Yeah, we've got a very good handicap compared to us. Hey. Now our handicap is substantially light, lower than this. So I've just mentioned the handicap system. So basically all boats at the start of the year are assigned a handicap and that handicap is effectively a percentage modifier that's applied to your finishing time for your race. And the idea is uh, it gives slower boats a chance to compete with faster boats and you should end up with a, a balanced race. 
One thing that really doesn't help, uh, particularly in light winds when you're trying to keep the boat moving, keep the momentum of the boat, is wake um, or any kind of chop or swell, anything that kind of knocks the boat off its rhythm, uh, which you can kind of see happening here at the moment. Now this is a particularly hairy point because we're still working our way up to that first mark at the wind, wind, windward end of the course and you can see these rocks on our left. Um, and we're getting a little bit close, so it's all getting a bit squeaky button. So right now we're making the same overground as we are through the water, so I'm guessing it's slack here. So we should pretty much be able to tap. Well, no, because we're making the set, well maybe, but here we're not. No, here we're not, we want to go through it, I'd rather clear it at one. So, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Well, well, we'll take that lead, right? And then maybe out of it. Yeah, the boat, the boat here was a good number five degrees, I'd say. Yeah. Right, they're throwing it in. Yeah, they're, going, they're going straight Oh, I thought that was a hoist. I I'll get off of this ship. Do you want to free up this sheet? Okay, I'm going to throw us through in a couple of seconds. Put your line on as we go. We're tacking. Yep. It's just otherwise weird. Let's go. Off the foot or something. Always in the news is when I see the parts before we go above. Okay, so that was a classical, terrible tack when we needed it to be decent, but never mind. Uh, we really should have had the spinnaker rigged up on the bow and ready to hoist here because we're we're not very far away from rounding the windward mark and going onto a downwind leg. Um, but being double-handed and being so close to those rocks, I was a bit reluctant to hand over the helm. Uh, so the spinnaker is rigged and ready to go and we're coming up to the windward mark now so it's a bit of a slow hoist as you'll see. Oh, my God. 
Uh, what an absolute clown show. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know, I haven't even counted how long that was in the list. It must have taken us like five to eight minutes to get up. It didn't help that it wasn't packed away properly, but just absolutely nothing was ready. Uh, excuse my spinnaker trim here, it's been a good couple of years since I've been flying the spinnaker, so it took us a little while to get this back in shape. But hey, at least we got it up before we got to the downwind mark, so that's one thing. Down the one spinny pole. Yeah, right. What we'll do is probably run slightly tighter angles. They've smashed us. Yeah. God damn it. Okay, there's a green line on the side of the cockpit. I told you the lock before. Yeah, there's a lot of locks. So yeah, uh, here what's happened is I forgot to put the downhill on spinnaker pole. So yeah, not really being fun. Um, yeah, I was pretty disappointed with how we'd done because uh, to be close to glory days is, is very good for us and we did alright on the upwind leg. Um, we just really messed up on the hoist. Okay, just lightly tension that, take the flash out of it. That's it. Let's go higher, so a bit more left. Okay, I'll take the helm. Okay, we've got the pole back. Left seat cam. So in general, when you're flying a symmetrical spinnaker like this, you try and have the pole kind of perpendicular to the wind. Um, our mark is actually pretty much directly downwind, but in light winds, that's a, a very slow way to sail. Uh, in general, running dead downwind is slow. Um, so what we're trying to do is slight, sail a slightly higher angle, and that's why we've not got the pole squared right back at this point. Worth noting as well that this is Josh's first ever time flying a symmetrical spinnaker, so he's very much learning the ropes and doing an alright job. This is also a time you'd use the vang to keep your, your boom down. You'd normally put the vang on, let the main sheet ride out to let the boom out, and it keeps the leech of the mainsail closed so it acts as an effective air dam. Uh, but unfortunately, my vang is currently on my workshop floor, so. Yeah. So your focus. Yeah. I would to make your life easier. Recenter the traveller now. Ah, oh, you're flying that one. Can't hand that to me. Uh, let's, we don't need to Okay, hand me the sheet. You centre the traveller. Okay. I think we can right take the helm. I want you to fly the sheet and take us a bit more towards our break. We will drop this before getting the gen, just so it's not a button. So yeah. remember, you're pulling it in. You're pulling it in through this gap, yeah? Yeah. I do question my own wisdom of putting this on the internet. But hey, I'm here primarily for your entertainment. <laughs> so bear away to stop that happening.
I've already broken the order I said I would do things in. Okay, pull in gently on your red seat. I'm ready on the halyard. I'm ready on the. Uh... Okay, coming down. Pull it, pull it, pull it. Yeah, we're good. I think we're good for the whole way. Right. Okay, let heads off. Great. Here we go. Okay, we're good. Okay, start turning us towards entree when you get the set. Okay, okay. Let's go. 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 Let's Pull it out. Yep. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. What side do we want it? This side. Yeah. We've got a line. The spinning. It's not undone, mate. The, the clam cleat next to you. This one. Yeah. Jack, it's not jammed at the clam cleat. No, we're fine. Okay, it's not all the way out. Ah. Right, it's jammed, it's nice. I thought I'd save you any more emotional pain of watching further terrible sailing. Eventually we did ram the mark. Uh, there was a fishing boat parked like right on it as well, which didn't help, but hey. So we're on the final upwind stretch now to the finish line, uh, back in line with Castle Corner, which you can see on the left-hand side in the distance. Uh, and unbeknown to us, the course has been shortened as we're about to find out. I'll tell you what, mate, put a little bit, you see the crinkles down the front of the jib? Yeah. See, and you see it's got slack at the bottom where we took the uh, the um, power off. Winch that on a little bit. Uh, no. Finish. Oh, so this is finished. Thank you. This is we need to have to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, lock that off. <laughs> Get more um, jib iron. So yeah, I didn't make that obvious. The original course yeah, wasn't actually a sausage course, it was longer than that. Um, but yeah, it got shortened due to the lack of wind, um, which I think everyone was very happy about. Ooh, so this last upwind leg proved to be quite tactical actually. Um, and we made a fair few wrong decisions, I would say. Uh, so the tidal flow is very different close to shore from further out in the channel. And how strong the wind was, was very different um, away from the shore. Uh, and we kind of made all the, the wrong choices, really. Uh, we also worked out that the boat seems to sail much better on a starboard tack, which is what we're on here. Um, versus a port tack, so something that we'll need to investigate, probably the mast not being in column, but yeah. Still pointing too high. Wow, we're really not pointing. Take that bit of high attention back off the jib. I think that's killing us. So we just move the draft back. So just literally slip it a couple of inches. Yep. There you go. Just give it a couple of inches. Yeah, it looks a little bit smoother. All right, let's see how that works. You got your wind? Oh, you've got your line back. Yeah. I mean the logs comes. Big dead patch over there, see it? About 100 meters in front of yeah. us? Yeah, I think we're going to go in a minute. Yeah. Alright, come back. Let's do it before this dead patch. Alright. When you're good? I'm good. Okay, attacking. Next time, okay, crank it. Still not really good enough, but hey, it's all right. Can we get? Yeah, higher. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah, 
Speed of that, slight over tension. What do you mean, do? No, you do. I'll try and roughly focus for once. <laughs> Don't start changing your habits. <laughs> so, not much, right? You need a winch handle, dude. Good point, well, mate. I say A, I mean D, winch handle. They've gone really far out. So, just take that crease out of it, you know? Tell you when. Go okay, back. Uh? Right, did that work or is it just slipped? Uh, I think we're getting it. <laughs> I'm looking and I can see what's happening. <laughs> You're cranking and the winch pads just to form it. That's fine, lock it off. I can see it hasn't gone the whole way up, there's not a lot we can do about that. Amazing the effect that has, dude. It completely changes the trim of the sail. Oh, yeah. Can't believe we missed it. First time racing, mate, in about a year, and it? You know, should be amazed. A lot of things have gone right. So, we're coming up to around about the point where the batteries in my GoPro die right at the end of a race. Um, long story short, we're the last boat across the line. Um, we really got hammered on this last upwind leg but we ended up finishing second on handicap, so not too, too bad. I appreciate this hasn't been the most exciting footage or race uh, you're ever gonna watch, but I figured it was worth getting some actual sailing up on the channel at last. So hopefully it's uh, it looks a nice enough area to be sailing in if nothing else, even if the boat is falling apart and not being sailed particularly well. Next video will probably be some of the changes I need to make to the boat. Um, as a result of this sail, we noticed there were several things weird on different tacks, which probably need the rig addressing. So yeah, look out for that one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.